Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Come on, lift your hands to heaven and get another drink. Ain't nothing worse than a straight Christian. Ah, fill us, fill us, kill us. Yes. Set us on fire, Papa. Set us on fire. Prepare, prepare, and prepare. Prepare. I keep hearing and saying in the Spirit, prepare. All glory. Prepare. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor, tell them this is your night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, we'll go there first. Praise God. Mark 16. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All brothers. Mark 16. Is everybody there? <laughs> Woohoo! Jesus. How many of y'all know we're in the end time? Amen. If you don't, you know now, right? <laughs> in Mark 16, in verse 16. Now remember the word believe means to what? Follow. follow. So if you say you're a believer but don't follow, you're a liar. Amen? Amen. Plain and simple. Oh, I believe. Oh, really? What are you still doing the unclean things anymore, homie? Amen? Why are you still touching stuff that ain't right? That's not believing. Believe means that you follow and you avoid idols and you don't touch things that are unclean. Amen? Then you're a true follower. Because if you're still touching stuff that's unclean, I get so many people come up to me, hi, yeah, I've been clean for 14 years. <laughs> oh, you got a huffing demon then, huh? How many of y'all know smoking is still using? Amen. 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 And it's just another open door. The Bible says, make no place for the devil. devil. Mark 16, 16. Let's speak it. He who what? Amen. Believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be what? Amen. So he who believes, he who follows will be saved. Amen. Final result. And these signs will follow those who what? Believe. In my name, they will what? They will do what? They will what? Cast out demons. Can a believer have a demon? You betcha. They can be loaded. Oh, I don't believe that. That's because you got one. It's called a lying one. Deceptive. In my name, you will cast out demons. If you ain't casting out demons... Hello, first thing you need to do is cast them out of yourself. Amen. You can look in a mirror, you see a blink, you know. <laughs> you see that wicked smile? Come on. Look in a mirror and find out what's in you. Who's in your mirror? Amen. Cast out demons. Why? Because that's the problem. Amen. Amen. You can either have demon management or you can be free. Amen. That's why people go to the secular world. Go to secular programs, they go to psychiatrists, they go to all these people. What do they do? They medicate them and make them zombies. So their body can't react to the demon. Amen? Then they call it bipolar, schizophrenia, and all kinds of stuff. Nobody ever reads the side effects, it's called death. <laughs> you know, oh, you can't sleep tonight? Here, take this, because you're stressful. They got all these butterflies, right? The Lord says he gives his children rest. In my name, they'll cast out demons. And they will speak with new tongues. That doesn't mean you're going to go to college and learn another language. It means you're going to get a new tongue. Amen? And you're going to be able to speak in tongues in your heavenly language directly to your Father. Amen? And that is a promise from God. And they will take up serpents. Now, we're not going to go around looking for serpents, but I can tell you one shows up, I'm cutting its head off. 
How many of y'all know a snake is a serpent? Amen. People are out there petting these snakes, not knowing they're, they're housing demons. They're the most cursed animal there is. Why well, have a pet snake? Kill it. <laughs> Don't be a wuss. Kill it, bury it. Make shoes out of it. <laughs> Make, you know, praise God, start a whole new business. Serpent sneakers. And they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it by no means hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and they will what? Recover. That's what every believer should be doing. That's the purpose of it. That's why God trains us up. That's why he rescues us, takes us from the darkness, so we can have dominion over everything. That's what brings his kingdom. The kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness, and all he goes, but not just in words, but in what? Power. Power. Now, I shared that because of where we're getting ready to get into. I'm going to give you a prophetic word that's happening and getting ready to happen more and more increase. And in this, we talked a little bit Sunday about it, about the four winds. And, and there is a release of the four winds right now. And God is releasing these winds. Winds has multiple meanings, a representation of God's breath, God's fire, God's presence, God's glory. God's judgment. There's four winds of judgment. Now, in God's judgment, it doesn't mean wrath. Does everybody understand that? There's a difference between God's judgment and God's wrath. His judgment comes with, he's judging. What's he doing? He's going to either come with a reward or a slap. Chasing. He's going to come with correction, counsel, correction, and direction, or reward. And Daniel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Daniel 7. Four winds. It is a prophetic move right now. Those who miss it will become pathetic, but those who are in it will be prophetic. Verse 1, read it with me, please. In the first year of Belazar, king of what? Babylon. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. And then he wrote down the dream and telling the main facts. Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night and behold, four winds of heaven were what? Stirring the great sea. I, I, again, these four winds are stirring. They're stirring up all kinds of stuff. Do you ever notice that just before you go through deliverance, you're coming pre preparing for deliverance, all of the demons that are in you are stirring up. They're telling you to run. They're telling you don't do this. And I mean, every voice from hell comes up. Amen. Daniel spoke saying, I saw the four winds of heaven. They were stirring up the great sea. Verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea. Why? Because they were being stirred up. Beasts is a representation of fallen angels. Each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man and the man's heart was given to it. In other words, these were associated with not only fallen angels, but angels that are ruling over nations. I'm not going to go into all of this because there's something else I'm trying to get to. In verse 5, And suddenly another beast, a second like bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird, the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. 
It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom the three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words. And I watched till thrones were put in place. And the ancients of day, the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow and his hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame and its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousands and thousands ministered to him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. And I watched them because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. Then all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. Thus his dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. Again, the four winds are causing a stirring right now. The beasts, again, are aroused because they are being exposed. One of the first things I want to tell you about the first wind that is coming, the first wind is unveiling, it's uncovering, it's pushing, it's exposing everything. Anything that can be exposed. It's a wind that unveils, it's uncovering. It's uncovering Satan's strategies, characters, and deceptions. And I want you to understand that this, what we just read right here, is a, it's a complete overview of what is and what is coming. This is a prophetic, God's word is three-dimensional. It's talking about what is and what is coming. Not only things that happened then, but what is and what is coming. These are four winds of judgment. Again, judgment that is, not, is not God's wrath. It's an area to where he's judging by fruits. You know, God desires no one to be lost. Amen? So it's coming with judgment. Now, in other words, it's coming with chastening, correction, counsel, direction, and with a reward, one or the other. And this is what's happening right now. This stirring is going on. We're seeing the stirring in a country, aren't we? Now, Belazar is a son of Nebuchadnezzar. And, and I want to go to uh, Daniel 5 so you can see a little bit of the behind the scenes. Daniel 5 and verse 1. It says, Belazar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belazar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father had, his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Now I want you to know that prophetically these vessels of gold and silver represent God's children. We are known as, we, have a, we are a treasured vessel now, aren't we? Amen. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the kings and his lords, his wives and the concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. Right now you know that people are worshiping money. That's, every, that's what everything's about right now. It's about money. All the political, everything's about money. And the word says in Timothy, it says that uh, in these perilous times, men will be cover, become lovers of themselves and money. And we're seeing it manifest tremendously. In verse 5, In the same hour, the finger, fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lamp, 
the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his hips were loosened, and his knees was knocking. In other words, he was afraid. Scared the hell out of him to make room for heaven. He saw the hand of God right on the wall. He knew something was up. And the king cried aloud, bring the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. In other words, all their witchcraft stuff. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me the interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck. He shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Then King Belazar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed, and his lords were astonished. The queen, his queen, this queen I want to share with you, because behind the scenes, everything is influenced by a spirit. And until we understand that we are being influenced by either the spirit of God or the spirit of demonic forces. In other words, who's telling you this? Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. And so in this, this queen is actually associated with the queen known as Jezebel. Amen? Okay. And so um, in this, uh, the queen said, because of the words of the king and his lords came to the banquet hall, the queen spoke saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you nor let your countenance change. There is a man in your kingdom and whom is the spirit of the holy God. That's amazing. Here's a demonic worshiper, but no, it's the spirit of the holy God, somebody who has it because they knew it. In other words, you will not be able to see what you're supposed to see without being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is the anointing of God that breaks the yoke of bondage. It is the anointing of God that allows you to get the position spiritually. Other than that, you're in the outer court. And in the days of your father, like a light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magi magicians and astrologers, Chaldeans, and so soothsayers. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, explaining enigmas, and were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belazar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. So what happened is Daniel was called. And in verse 24, Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written, and this is the inscription that was written, Manai, Manai, Tekel, Abhashan, whatever it is. This is the interpretation of each word, Manai, God has numbered your kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I want you to understand it because there's the four winds that are blowing right now. This is what's happening right now. The Lord is saying, your kingdom's about to end. See, people are so engulfed in the arena of, look, at doom and gloom is definitely there, but it's not for me and you. Amen? We're not accounted for God's wrath. As long as you're in position, you're fine. You're protected, man. But if you're not, you're in trouble. He said, look, at um, you're, you're, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. In other words, there's going to be a shift and a change. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Now, I want you to understand, a house divided cannot stand. This country is completely divided. And Belazar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain and gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night he died. And Darius took, King Darius took Belazar's place. Now, Darius is the one who put Daniel in the fire. And, uh, and, and when Daniel came out of the fire, King Darius glorified God Almighty. Amen, things changed. See, sometimes you got to go through the fire 
Does everybody understand it? Everyone is going through. That's one of the things about the wind. It's bringing fire. What's it doing? Cleansing and purifying. And those who are willing to yield to that cleansing and purifying will become new again. There's an, a newness coming. Listen, in this, uh, God will interpret to us Satan's plans and raise up end time warriors. That's what he's doing right now. He's raising those up who are willing. They're no longer fighting for their lives. They're surrendering them. The only thing they fight for is God's presence. That's it. Because they know God's presence is everything. See, God's presence to them is everything. Not money. Nothing else. Everything. Why? Because if you got God's presence, you got everything. Amen? I'm going to show you about Jezebel. Because right now, Belazar, Obama is in the spirit of Belazar. And Hillary Clinton is in the spirit of Jezebel. So we are in this prophetic timeline that is happening with the four winds that are stirring up things. Everybody's seeing all the stuff being exposed. The media and all the other garbage that's being exposed. All of the hidden stuff. All of the... Uh, whistleblowers that are exposing all kinds of demonic stuff and, 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 uh, and all kinds of things in the government and, uh, and the FBI and all kinds of things. All of this is being exposed right now. The purpose of it is because God is blowing it and ripping it, pulling back the veil and uncovering. In Revelation chapter 2. See, again, in the spirit, you're able to see through the natural and see what's influ influencing individual spirits, human spirits. That's called the spirit of discernment. It's a gift given to everyone that's filled with the Holy Spirit. There's nine gifts. One of the gifts is called the spirit of discernment. So it gives you the ability to see through the natural realm into the spirit realm and see what spirit is influencing human spirit. And you'll know them by the fruit, won't you? Verse 18, would you read it with me? And to the angel of the church and Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like brass, fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have... A few things against you. Because you allow the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sac sac sacrificed to idols. In other words, if you begin to look in the arena of the Clinton, there's a lot of sexual things going on. In fact, there's a lot of murder going on. And it says, I gave her... Time to what? Repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Hello? Anybody realize how sick she is? Most people don't even know. And those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. In other words, they will not get raptured. They won't, they'll, be, they'll stay here. Unless they what? Repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who reaches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say and to the rest of Thyatira. As many as do not have this doctrine. Who have not known the depths of Satan. As they say I will put on you no other burden. You know, many people don't know the depths of Satan. They're just tiptoeing through their tulips thinking that's just Christian life. It's just call on Jesus and everything is fine. When Jesus said, look at man, I didn't come to bring you peace. I came to bring you a sword. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But hold fast what you have till I come and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. So again, that was the arena of where we're at right now. These are the spirits that we're fighting against. Is everybody with me? Remember, we do not fight flesh and blood. 
We fight powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, principalities, territorial spirits, demons, hybrids, fallen angels. We're coming against all of them. And if you're not a first striker, you'll be struck. And if you're not in a battle, you will become a casualty. It's just a matter of time. Because if you don't put these powers of darkness in place, they'll put you in place. And they know whether you know it or not. Why? Because they know exactly what you think. They read your mind. They know their spirits. They can walk right through your body. They know everything about you. Amen? Is everybody okay? Matthew chapter 7. You know, some people just haven't gotten the reality of this yet, of what's going on. They're still playing religion stuff. <clears throat> people need to stop living out of their heads and not start living out of the spirit. Amen? <clears throat> Matthew 7, verse 13. Let's speak it, please. Enter by the what? narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it in other words oh this is just you know hello see there's that wide gate where just people just okay oh Jesus loves me see let me tell you something about Jesus' love where there's love there's judgment there is no judgment without love. In fact, he judges because of his love. People go, oh, how can a loving God do this? Well, you better read some of your Bible and find out what happened. In fact, God doesn't do it. We do. Because everything we bring on is because of us. We open doors to demonic forces. We touch and agree with the voice of the devils. We touch unclean things. We touch things that are accursed items we bring in our home. And people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They don't even realize what's going on. And they wonder why there's, everything's being stolen, killed, destroyed. Having no true identity. Look at it. If you don't know who you are yet, then you need to know more of him. Because when you know him, you know who you are. Amen? And this is not head knowledge. It's not how much you read does everybody get this? You know, you won't know anything until you experience it. You got to experience it, man. I can't tell you what it's like to be on fire until you get on fire. <laughs> Believe me, I'd like to light you up. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to be healed unless you've been healed. You don't know what it's like to cast out a devil unless you had one cast out of you. Amen. Or you cast out of someone else. But see, experiences build testimony. Amen? Amen? It's a great thing that when you pray and intercede and you first strike and you see it happen. It's encouraging, isn't it? God loves to encourage us. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> experience brings revelation. When you experience something, it brings a revelation. And in that revelation... You put the restraints back on. Because without revelation, restraints come off. And you think that everything's just hunky-dory. And he keeps stepping in traps. How many of y'all know that the enemy sets traps for you every single day? Verse 13, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go into it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is a way which leads to life and there are few who find it. Few. You know, there was a gentleman, a testimony <clears throat> that uh, was a preacher, died. The Lord took him home. He got before the Lord because he wanted to ask for his time, more time here on the earth. And while he was waiting to go to see the Lord, the angels was sharing with him, can you count? And he's like, what do you mean? Like, he was counting. There was 50 people there. He said, 2,000 died. He said, what do you mean? He said, 2,000 died. Not out of the 2,000, only 50 made it. 
That's 97.5% that don't. That's incredible what the, what the Lord was showing this man. See, the word says many will say, Lord, Lord, in those days. But they still practice lawlessness. See, you can know the truth and not be free until you put it to practice. Amen? Only putting the truth to practice frees you. Anybody can read a Bible until it becomes a training manual for you and you realize that this is a military operation and not some religious thing. Either that you'll stay religious. But you won't be filled with the power of God. You won't be looking to see what's influencing you. You'll be too busy counting your money or trying to do whatever else you do to maintain in this realm. You won't even, be, you won't even see what's influencing you. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Look what this says here in verse 15. Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. We're seeing that all over. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree, which means every person, every good tree, a tree is a representation of a spirit. Every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit, and the good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by your fruits, you will know them. Are you ready for 21? Here we go. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, hey, what's up, man? I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I did many wonders in your name. Then the Lord will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me because you what? Practice lawlessness. Oh, that throws the theology of out once saved, always saved, don't it? Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will what? Liken him to be a what? Wise man who built his house on the rock. That rock is called the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew. The what? The winds blew. Mm. And beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock or the anointing. Again, the word says that the anointing, nothing, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the anointing. That's what Jesus said, I'll build my church on, the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, carried by the Holy Spirit. Peter was not the rock, nor was he the Pope. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be likened like a what? Foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its, great was its fall. For he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe or religious dude. Again, the way is narrow and difficult. The price we pay is called cooperation. If you're not willing to cooperate, that's not, then you're not willing to pay the price. Amen? What's the price? Cooperation. Amen. And you're cooperating with the Holy Spirit, who is also known as the wind of God, who's also known as the breath of God. Is everybody okay? Amen. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. Is everybody there? And Jesus being assembled with them, together with them, he commanded, he did what? He did what? He did what? So he didn't ask him, did he? He commanded him. And what did he command him to do? Not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. In other words, I command you to wait to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you can't make it without me. You can't make it without my presence. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Go to verse 8. What does it say? 
But you shall receive what? Power. How many of y'all need power? Amen. Power to do what? Overcome. Amen. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Power. Now go to Acts chapter 2. In verse 1. Let's speak it together, okay? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly came a what? Sound from heaven as a what? Rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared on them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. So they were all speaking in what? Tongues. The mighty wind, the breath of God. Blue, fresh upon them. Again, to walk in, walk in the Spirit, to flow in the wind of God, you must be filled with the wind of God. Why? Because you blend in. Does everybody understand that? You blend in. You flow with the wind. You're being led by, the, it's called being led by the Spirit. And being led by the Spirit is called sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. Why? Because they're not being led by anything else. They're being led by the King of glory. They're being led by the Holy Spirit. And believe me, he's going to lead you into great things. In Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Four winds. We're in it. It's happening and it's going to increase. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. It says, The Lord came upon me. And brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of what? Dry bones. Man, there are many dry bones in the kingdom. Then he caused me to pass over them and around. Behold, there was very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very, very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord, you know. And he said to me, prophesy, speak. I mean, y'all know that there's breath in your mouth. Amen. It's a wind, isn't it? I mean, y'all know Jesus was the wind of God. <laughs> Came into this realm and left his presence. Oh, glorious. And he said, speak to them. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall what? Live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone bone to bone. And indeed as I looked the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the Lord God come from the what? Four winds O breath and breathe on these slain that they may what? That they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded. And breath came into them. And they lived and they stood upon their feet. And an exceedingly great what? Army. That's what's happening right now. The army of God is being raised up. Backed by the wind of God. And a great 
army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. How many know the house of Israel represents the body of Christ? They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold all my people, I will open your graves. Some people are into graves, man. Amen. Don't even realize it. They're dead bones. They are dead. Listen, if you're lukewarm, you're dead. You're dead in the spirit. If you're lukewarm, if you're cold, you're dead in the spirit. Only those that are hot are alive in the spirit. That's why Jesus, look at the body of Christ has been in a lukewarm condition. That's why God's got to blow the, his, the wind and bring fire. And he said, oh, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, oh, my people, and brought you up from your graves. And then I will what? Put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. I want to bring you something prophetically. This was a prophetic word that was brought forth. In other words, because of the wind is bringing new life, there's a refreshing, a, a cleansing coming. The wind of the Holy Spirit will increase as the wind of the Holy Spirit increases, it will begin to break down the strongholds of men's tradition and doctrines. God is getting ready to build a new house with walls of truth. He said, I'm going to be placing my chosen leadership over my house and removing those that have occupied positions appointed by men and self. Rebellion can no longer remain in my house. My wind of fire will expose all that is unfitting to my purpose. But I will give my true servants a fresh anointing of love and wisdom. Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> hey, get the CD. <laughs> Are you ready? Want me to speak that again? Hallelujah. As the wind of the Holy Spirit, the four winds increase, the Lord will begin to break down the strongholds of men's traditions and doctrines. They'll begin to break down more. God is going to set a new building. He's going to be building uh, a new house with the walls of truth. I'm sharing with you, this is not only in God's kingdom, but in multiple places. He said, I'm <clears throat> placing my chosen leaders, my chosen leadership over my house and removing those that have occupied positions appointed by men and self. It's going to begin to remove and replace. He said, rebellion can no longer remain in my house. My wind of fire will expose all that is unfitting to my purpose. And I will give my true servants a fresh anointing of love and wisdom. Remember, wisdom tells you what to do and understanding tells you how to do it. In Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 verse 11. Let's speak it, please. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ or the anointing. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with what? Every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But what? Speaking the truth in love may grow up. Everyone say grow up. And all things into him who is the head Christ. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working. By which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in, in love. Amen. 
the winds of doctrine. There's so many false doctrines out there. The, the word says that many will fall taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And we're seeing it. People are mixing Christianity with New Age. There's a, not, a lot of New Age mixing with Christianity. <clears throat> the true wind will bring the fear of God. When there is a true wind of God, when there's a, the, God's wind, the wind of his doctrine brings the fear of God and humbleness. It brings the fear of the Lord and the fear is reverence, honor, and respect. And it brings a humbleness. The false wind that comes, these false winds of doctrine will bring pride and arrogance and what we call selfishness. It's all about me. You know, one of the things people lose sight of, Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He carried the wind of God. God breathed through him. Amen? Now think about this, how music affects people. Why? Because doesn't it create a wind? You know, many Christians don't even realize that they're listening to secular music and open themselves up to demons and they wonder why things happen to them. Because they're not looking at the root of where that music comes from. Oh, it sounds great. I bet you it does. The devil can make things sound real good. Lucifer was a carrier of the wind of God. He breathed music through him. He became prideful. Why? Because that wind changed on him. That false wind blows through the secular music, calling up demons. Hmm. And what it does is they enter their minds they enter their spirits and their bodies and they begin to feed on them because they create an emotion. And demons get fed by emotion. Fear is an emotion. Anger, unforgiveness, bitterness. What happens is now they, they begin to steal the love of God with bitter and exchange it for bitterness. See, the devil attacks you from your past. Amen? He can't attack you from the future. That's why we must live in the future to the present. And you can only do that by being in the spirit. We no longer live from the past to the present. We live from the future to the present. Has everybody got that? That's called walking in the spirit. You're no longer looking behind. What is behind me stays behind me. Amen? That's why the Lord said, get behind me, devil, right? And that's why you got to get your old man behind you. Too many people, the old man's in front of them and directing them. Their spirits are weak. Everybody okay? First John chapter two. Remember, you are what you eat. And what you speak is what you eat. You are what you listen to. As a man thinks, so he is. So if you speak light, you eat light, and you begin to change. You listen to darkness, you become darkness. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Four winds. These are the things that the four winds is unveiling. It's moving so people get understanding. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So if you're not doing the will of God, can you abide forever? No, that blows the theology of once saved, always saved, don't it? Because that's not doctrines of Christ, that's the doctrines of demons. Verse 18. Little children, is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. In other words, the spirit of Antichrist, the anti-anointing spirit, the religious spirit, begins to separate. It causes people. Why? Because you become unevenly yoked. Many people get into marriages without knowing whether they're yoked. 
See, if you, man, don't marry, you don't marry somebody that's not right with God. And don't marry somebody that ain't filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, it will work out one day. Yeah, right. Hello? Amen? Verse 20, read, read it with me. But you have a what? You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Praise God. Why? Because the anointing teaches us, doesn't it? Amen? That is the wind. That's, listen, the first wind exposes ungodliness. Exposes Satan's strategies. It exposes, it unveils, it uncovers. Why? So that man can repent. Amen? So man can repent. The second wind, win, and I'm going to show you about these winds. The second wind brings a fresh anointing and helps us get into divine position. The second wind brings a fresh anointing. And, I want, and when I saw the second wind coming, I saw these golden handled swords fall out of the wind. They were falling out of the wind into God's hand, into God's people's hands. So I want you to know that, that when the second wind that's blowing brings a fresh anointing and it's also bringing a sword. It's coming right out of the wind, falling right into the hands. But see, that's where you are spiritually positioned. Boom, you grab it. Oh, glory. Again, the first wind exposes Sin and ungodliness, Satan's strategy, so that people can come to repentance. And the second one brings a fresh anointing. It brings us into divine position with a, a, a fresh anointing and a fresh sword to battle what's been exposed. So everybody got it? To battle what's been exposed. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10 and verse 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I'm <laughs> him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. Does everybody got it? A sword. That's what's coming. And the second wind, a fresh sword. Golden handle, silver sword. There is no peace. There can never be peace on earth until the Prince of Peace comes. Amen. But you can have peace within you, can't you? Amen. Psalm 1. First one exposes... Second one brings fresh anointing and a sword. <clears throat> verse 1, Psalm 1, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Blessed is the man. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Okay, here we go. Blessed is the man who does not walk in a council of the ungodly or rebellious nor stands in the path of sinners, liars. <clears throat> nor sits in the seat of the scornful, gossipers, you know, perverse mouth. But his delight is in the law, or what we call the truth of the Lord. <clears throat> and in his law he meditates day and night. He compares the truth of God with everything he does. It says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does he shall what? Prosper. The third wind will bring provision. It will bring provision and prosperity to help those who are in need. It's coming to those who are faithful. Why? Because these are stewards of the Lord who know how to distribute. And the purpose of this 
<clears throat> is to bring provision to those who are in need. So God is going to bring provision, prosperity to his servants and stewards. Amen. In this wind. And now those are going to be distributed to those who are in need. So that there can be training for new recruits. Has everybody got it? Training for new recruits. People call them new believers. They're recruits because everybody's recruited to be a soldier. Amen? Verse 4 says, The ungodly, the rebellious, are not so, but are like the chaff which the what? Wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous and the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. That is the third wind. Provision. Amen. Prosperity. So we can distribute and train and provide for those that are in need. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <clears throat> Therefore be what? Imitators as God, of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma but fornication, all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor false or foolish talking, coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving to thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Wow. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be what? Partakers with him. For you were once darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather expose it. Expose it, expose it, expose it. Depart from evil. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. Hello. Because the graves have been opened, right? And Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk on imitation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's where the anointing is. A fresh anointing will bring more of the divine character, nature, power, and favor. That fresh anointing is going to bring more of God's divine nature in me and you. I'll bring more divine power. And you'll have divine favor. Because God wants to place his children in a, in a position of favor. That's what allows you to stand out amongst others. How come, how come this ain't bothering you in this circumstance? How come when everything else is falling around you and you're still standing? Yeah. Can't touch this. Amen? Do, 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 do. Second Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> and we have one more verse. God willing. <laughs> hey, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night because it's Tuesday night live. The word of God is worth the drive. There's one thing God is not a respecter of. Amen. 
His word he loves. His word he loves. In fact, his word is the name above his, his word is above his name. I, now listen, I, I, this word here is what we call logos. It's written. But there are words in the words. It's dimensional. It's three-dimensional. When you get in the spirit and you begin to see through everything, you get vision. Because faith is vision, isn't it? Faith is spiritual sight. You hear, you see, you do. That's called faith. Jesus said it. I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. There's no such thing as blind faith. That's idiots. I'm walking in blind faith. Well, you're an idiot. It's called assumption. It's called a sin of presumption. Unless God tells you to do it, don't do nothing. You wait. And when you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. But, but, but. That's a little moped. But, 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 but. Roy Spurner say, me, 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 me. And Harley say, come out, come out, come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways. Oh, don't get religious on me now, okay? Amen. Verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 2. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the plan of God, because that's what grace is. That, it is, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Wow. You therefore must endure hardship as a what? A good soldier of Jesus Christ. Everyone say, I'm a soldier. I'm a, war I'm a warrior. And I'm armed and dangerous. Verse 4. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? Because you will lose. You know, the word says something very powerful. You cannot serve two masters. If you serve two masters, the devil will win. Amen. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics... He's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules or the will of God, the ways of God. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is what? Not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember, them of all these things, charge them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. And the fourth wind is in Matthew 24. In verse 29. Is everybody there? It says, immediately after tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Believe me, they're shaken right now. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a what? Great sound of a trumpet, fulfilling the Feast of Trumpets. And they will gather together his elect from the what? Four winds. That's the final wind called the rapture. From one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree, which is the branch. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Now, of course, the fig tree represents Israel when Israel became a nation in 1948, right? So you also, when you see all these things, know that it's near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till 
all these things take place. Again, a generation of 70 years. Israel became a nation in 1948. 70 plus 1948 equals 2018. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to be perfect about it. Amen. God knows exactly when. We don't know the time and season. Well, we do know seasons. In fact, the next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets. It's the removal of the body of Christ. It's coming soon. So the Lord said, this generation, when Israel becomes a nation, that generation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. I'm going to come. Now, we know that the calendars may be off a little bit, but they can't be that far off. We see what's going on, don't we? And surely I say to you, this generation by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not by no means pass away. But of that day and that hour, no one knows, not even the angels have heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, are we like the days of Noah? Yeah. How about the days of Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh, well, yeah. So also they were, will come to son, son of man be. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and all kinds of other stuff and having a good time until the day of Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So we're to be ready. But I'm telling you, we're in the wind. The wind is blowing. Things are happening. It's going to continue to increase. And the word says that more wicked will rise. You'll see more and more evil. They know their time is short, but God is preparing us. Whatever the devil tries to do, God will double anoint you. As long as you're in position. Amen. You got to stay filled with the Spirit of God. You got to stay filled with the Word of God. Divine positioning. Stay plugged in. What does he say? Abide, abide, abide. Three abides. Abide in prayer and word, praise and worship, and fellowship. You abide. When you break one of those, you open a door. Amen. Amen? Abide, abide, and abide until you're eternally abiding. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let a fresh wind blow upon your people here. Remove anything. Burn everything out. Cleanse us, purify us, sanctify us, set us apart, hide us, hide us in the glory, in your glory, Lord. Dress us anew, refresh us. Anyone in here that's lukewarm or cold, Lord, set them on fire. <clears throat> Let a zeal come for your house. <clears throat> Break the yokes of each and every one of us. Visit us in dreams and visions. And let the seed that's been imparted in them and the prophetic word that's been imparted in them be protected by the blood of Jesus and grow and bear fruit for your glory. Father, it's time. I understand it's time. So keep us vigilant, alert, and consistent so we may see what you want us to see, hear what you want us to hear, and follow. That we may be your signs and wonders at this end time. In Jesus' name. And everybody said what? Amen. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God.